Hey everybody, welcome back. Today we are going to write code that makes lights blink. Whenever you're first learning to program or anytime you start with a new programming language, the first program you work on is Hello World. With embedded systems, which is our topic for today, you start with blink. What is Hello World? Hello World is the first program that most programmers learn anytime they learn to program and it, it usually all it does, it's really simple, all it does is it prints something out, usually Hello World. Okay. Today's video is the first real hands-on embedded systems video that I've ever made, which is kind of crazy considering that it's something that I do all the time in my research. I'm also making this video specifically for Ms. Bargeron's class at R.C. Edwards Middle School and Jane's joining because she wanted to say hi to her friends. When I'm in South Carolina, I spend a fair amount of time down at R.C. Edwards uh, working in Ms. Bargeron's class, trying to teach 6th and 7th graders about programming and about electronics. And I'm in Africa for the year, so I can't be there myself, so this is the next best thing. So this video is geared for beginners. This could be brand new beginner programmers you've never programmed before, or people who have programming experience and want to get some experience, want to try their hand at embedded programming. So today we are going to use Arduino Uno boards. That's this guy. In a lot of the educational stuff I do, I use Arduino for reasons that I discussed in a previous video, and also because I know it's what the students at RC Edwards are going to be using. But of course, the things we talk about are going to be easily adaptable to any other Arduino compatible board, and pretty much any other embedded microcontroller based board that you want to play with that has a light on it that you could blink. Also in this video, we're going to use the Arduino IDE. I don't always use it in my own work, but I think it's the most user-friendly way to get started. And in a future video, I'm going to get into the weeds a little more and talk about how we do this in the terminal and without the Arduino libraries and the IDE. Of course, I'll put links in the description to all the hardware and software that I'm using for this video in case you want to try it out yourself. So you ready, Jane? Let's get started. So first, let's talk about what Arduino gives you. If we start at the IDE, notice that it starts you off with some starter code. Now, if you have experience with C or C++, this is going to look really familiar. It's actually C++, but where a traditional C++ program would start with a main function, Arduino starts out with two functions, which are setup and loop. And this is because most embedded programs are designed to run forever. They don't end. Whether you're designing a toy or a dishwasher, you probably don't want it to just run for a few seconds and then stop and never turn on again until you turn it off and turn it back on. Now, you typically want it to keep working until you turn it off, until you push the button. Okay, so in Arduino programs, you put setup code, that's code you only want to run first, in this setup function. And this is going to run at the beginning. Now when I say in this function, for now you can pretty much ignore the void. The function's called setup. If there were inputs to that function, you would put those inside the parentheses. We don't have any arguments, and so we're not going to put anything there. And anything that we put between these two curly braces, this is going to run at the start of our program. Then the rest of my code is going to go in loop, and loop runs over and over and over and over, and it basically never stops until we power off the device. It's just gonna run forever. If I were to try to run this starter code, it's not gonna do anything because I just haven't put any actual code in it. It doesn't do anything. So let's add some code to blink some lights. Okay, now the code we're gonna start with today actually comes with the Arduino software. Just go to the menu, first to file, then examples, then basics, and then blink. And of course, along the way, you notice that there are a ton of examples that come with Arduino. Feel free to explore them if you're interested. But we're all going to start with Blink, and here it is in all of its glory. Now let's go through and see what we're seeing here. Mm-hmm. First thing, there are a lot of comments here. For the absolute beginners here, comments aren't code. They're just stuff that the programmer put in here to help readers understand what's going on. Yeah, so anytime you see a forward slash, asterisk, and a bunch of text like you see up here at the beginning, followed by an asterisk and then another forward slash, anything between the forward slash asterisk and the asterisk forward slash, that's all a comment. Plus, anything on a line after two forward slashes basically is ignored by the compiler. So this is all just notes that we put in here to make it easier to see what's going on. But this is what the code would look like without any comments. And notice that there's not a lot there. It's pretty simple, and if I try to run the program like this, it's going to behave exactly the same as it would with the comments. The computer basically just throws them all out. So now let's take a closer look at the code and see what we're actually looking at. So the first thing we see here is that we declare a variable. Jane, have you seen variables before? Math. 
class. <laughs> yeah, you've seen variables in math class, right? And these variables are a lot like the ones you see in math class, except that we can change their value. So in a computer program, a variable is just a space in memory. It's basically saying that we want to be able to store some data someplace, and then we want to be able to refer to it by its name. So this variable, when I type int, that means I want an integer. Now, you know what an integer is from math class? Yes. It's a positive or a negative number that isn't a fraction. Yeah, so 2 would work. 12.5 would not work. Okay, so negative 12, positive 12, those are all fine. Negative 12.1, not fine. What does integers have to do with code? Well, what I'm trying to do is, in my program, I'm trying to set up an integer. I'm trying to basically say, I want to store a number, right? I want to keep a number. So let's look at, at how we're actually using this. This number, I'm saying it's going to be an integer, and I'm going to call it LED, and then I'm going to assign its value to be 13. Also note that the semicolon at the end. Semicolons in this particular programming language are a lot like periods. They pretty much go at the end of any statement. It's the way we say, hey, this is the end of the thing that I'm saying. It's okay. funny. There's math class in programming, but there's English class too. Yep. <laughs> it definitely, it's a language, so it has its own grammar, and we have to learn the rules. Why do we want a variable that is called LED? Well, this brings us back to our hardware. Now, each board you work with has a microcontroller on it, and the microcontroller interacts with the rest of the board through a bunch of metal pins. They're literally pins. You can see them right there, right? So this one has a bunch of pins, and you can also see the pin numbers. A lot of these pins are made available. You can see along the edge of the board, pin 0, 1, 2, 3, all the way up to 13 are all made available here on this side of the board. Okay, so these are different pins that are made available, and we want to keep track of one of those pins, it turns out that pin 13 is connected to this LED1 that's here on the board, and that's the thing we're going to blink. So that's why I'm setting this to be 13. Now, the other question is, why do we call this an LED? Do you know what an LED is, Jane? LED stands for Light Emitting Diode. Which means? It's a special kind of light bulb, basically. So this particular light on our Arduino board is an LED. So you're going to hear when people talk about circuit boards and lights, a lot of times they'll refer to them as LEDs not ever led. Okay, now this pin 13 is what we call a general purpose pin. Sometimes you're going to hear people call them GPIO pins. That just stands for general purpose input and output pin. So these pins can be used as outputs if we want to send electric signals to something, or inputs if we want to measure the output of something else. So if something else is sending us a voltage and we want to measure it, we'd use it as an input. So for this example, we're blinking lights, we want to use outputs. So back here in our code, you'll notice that in setup, we do one thing. We call a function called called pin mode that Arduino gives us, and it does one thing. It sets one of the pins to be an input or output. So in this case, we are setting our LED pin, the pin that's connected to the LED, to be an output. Make sense? Okay, now let's look down in loop. Down here in loop, we're going to call two more functions. The first is digital write, and the second is delay. So digital write changes the state of a pin, so it'll make the pin either go high or go low. Why is it called digital write? So digital just means that it can only go high or low. So we can set the pin to be high, a high voltage, or low, a low voltage. Okay, now write just means that it's an output that we're actually changing the state. It's like we're like when you write, you make something, you make a change. But reading would be to measure something. So digital write basically says, I want to take that LED pin that we defined, which is 13, and I want to make it high, and then delay, that's pretty obvious, right? Delay just waits. It doesn't do anything. It just waits a certain number of milliseconds. So we're going to wait a thousand milliseconds. And then we're going to set the pin to be low, and we're going to wait another thousand milliseconds. And remember that loop is going to do this over and over again. That's why it's called loop. So this on, wait, off, wait behavior is going to cause the light to just keep blinking forever and ever until the bulb eventually burns out or we turn the thing off. Yes. Okay, so let's try it out. First thing, make sure that your Arduino board is plugged into your computer, into one of the USB ports. Then, go up to the tools menu and make sure you select the Arduino Uno board. This tells Arduino what sort of hardware it's talking to. If you get this wrong, you may not be able to put the code on your board, and your program may not work. Now, you may also have to set the port. I'm on a Mac, and as long as I have only one Arduino plugged into my machine, usually it guesses the right port but occasionally it gets it wrong. So sometimes you may just have to go in here and select the port just to, to set it right. And if you get the wrong port, it's just not gonna work. 
Okay, so now that we have that set up, notice that there are two buttons up here in the top left corner. What do they do? The first tries to convert the code from a form that we can read, which is what it's in right here, into a form that the computer can read, and that's called compiling the code. The second is the upload button, and that's right next to it, and that basically says, okay, take that compiled code and send it to the Arduino, actually put it on the Arduino. Okay, so let's upload this code and see what happens. It blinks. As promised, we now have a program that is blinking this little light one time a second. It changes the light from on to off once every second. So at this point, I want to give you a little challenge. I want you to take the opportunity to try to change this program to do something new. And specifically, what I'd like you to do is to change this code so that it blinks the light twice as quickly. So I want it to, instead of changing once a second, I want it to change twice a second. Okay, Jane and I are going to do this, but if you'd like to try your hand at it as well, then you should pause the video and then push play again when you're ready to hear our solution. Okay, Jane, let's tell them how we do it. Okay, so while doing programming, I've noticed that it's a lot like math. And as we see here, the delay time is 1,000 milliseconds. That's one second. So if we want to make it half a second, we would just half 1,000, and that would get us 500 milliseconds, which is half a second, which is what we want. So let's see if this works. Okay, so we're changing both delay times to 500 from 1,000. Okay, so we upload the code. And it works. And sure enough, we're blinking twice as quickly. Great. Now let's take it a step further, and I actually want to use this blinking light to do an experiment to test our eyes. What's wrong with our eyes? Nothing's wrong with our eyes, Jane. But our eyes do have some limitations, and I want to teach you about them by blinking this light. So specifically, what I want to do is I want to blink the light faster and faster and faster and figure out, at some point, you and I are not going to be able to see the differences in the light blinking. You believe me? We'll see. Okay. Again, pause the video, try it out yourself, see how fast you can blink the light without noticing the change, and then play it again and we'll come back. Okay, Jane, show me what you did. Okay. So what I did is we want to make it faster and faster, so we'll be decreasing the delay time. Now, I thought about just halving it every time. The, that seems like a lot more steps, and I think that we can get there quicker if we just cut down by a lot. So I'm, I'm just going to go to 200, because 200 is very close to five. It's close to half, but not quite. And then let's upload. It's definitely going pretty fast. I can still definitely see that it's blinking. So now let's try 60. 60 is a good number. Okay, now let's upload this code and see what it does. Now it's going super duper fast, but I can definitely still see it. So let's go to 30 now. Okay, it's going so fast. Ah! Whoops. It's going so fast I almost can't see it. I still can see it. So let's go to 20. Upload. Okay, it's going so fast I can barely see when it's off but it's still flickering and a little blurry. So I'm gonna change this to 15. And hopefully that will be our answer. Upload it. Okay, I think this is where you finally cannot see it any longer. Depending on the lighting in the room you're in, you may get slightly different results here as far as what you can see, but the results you get should fall between 10 and 20. And it's interesting, you'll notice that TV and movies typically record their video footage at 24 frames per second or 30 frames per second because that's very close to naturally what our eye can pick up. Anything faster than that and our eye has a really hard time seeing the difference. Now there are a lot of different things we could try with this. Specifically, we could try to blink patterns, like maybe the rhythm of a favorite song. you can add more delays, they don't have to all be the same length. You can add more digital write calls if you want to create more complicated code. Wait, if I added the delay time for both of them to one, would it be like the exact, it would look like it's not even changing, not even flickering in the tiniest bit? Yes. Would it even be blinking? Well, it's blinking, but it's blinking once a millisecond and you just can't see it. I'm sorry. Can we go to the other code? I want to try this out. <laughs> yeah. One. And it doesn't even look like it's moving at all. It's not even flickering or blurring at all. Because you can't see that fast. No, it look it, like that is impossible to see with the human eye. No, no. <laughs>
Okay, so a couple other things that I just want to point out before we're done. The first is I didn't need to use a variable here. I could have just put 13 everywhere where I have LED, like this, right? I could have just done that, and it would have been the same. But so why did I? I don't know, Dad. Why did you? Well, the reason is using a variable makes my code easier to change. So let's say that I decide that I don't want it to blink the LED that's on this board. Maybe we want to blink a different LED. And I just so happen to have an LED right here. So I've got this little red LED right here. And let's say, pick one of these pins. Which pin would you like it to be? Um, I'd like number eight. Number eight. Okay, so we can wire this up to pin eight. So I can basically plug in the LED into pin eight. Now you notice I've also got some other stuff on here. Specifically, I have a resistor that's on, that's attached. So tiny. The idea with the resistor is the resistor is going to resist electrical current. So it's going to reduce how much current flows through here. The reason for this is if we allow too much electrical current to go through the bulb, then it's going to burn out the bulb. And it might also damage our Arduino. So typically we want to use at least 100, but it's safer with like two or 300 ohms of resistance on there. And then I can wire this to ground. And so now I have a circuit. The electricity is going to pass through the bulb, then around through this wire, through the resistor, and back to ground. Of course, it's not working, right? Nothing's blinking right now. And the reason is, is that we're blinking pin 13 but we attach this to pin 8. So how hard would it be to change this so that it blinks pin 8? Difficult. <laughs> well, how do we know what it's attached to? So I just have to put 8 in there and it'll work? Yeah. Really? What is this witchcraft? So you're sure that's going to work? Yeah, because when you, change, when you change that LED variable to be 8, it basically changes the value of 8 everywhere else. So go ahead. Okay, I've got Upload the code. I should change this. Oh, yeah. So something bigger. Let's go 100 again. And now the you can see... Blinks. Now you can see... Yes, it blinks. Oh, ah. it's not good. Now it does not blink. But now you can see I'm blinking this LED that's not on the board, and it blinks just like pin 13 did. And all we had to do was change one number in our program. Now, if we hadn't used the variable, I would have had to go through and change every single value where 13 was used. I would have had to change yeah, it to that 8. that wouldn't have been that great. <laughs> would have been kind of a pain, right? So anyway, that's a really good reason to use variables. We also could use variables to specify how long the delays are, and that would have made it easier. In this program, this is a really simple program, and so the advantages aren't super high of using variables for these things. But as you start doing more complicated things, building more complicated programs, the impact of using variables or not using variables makes a really big difference. So that's why I use them. And so this is the end of our basic Arduino Blink tutorial. It's all the time we have for today. Thanks for watching, RC Edwards students. I look forward to seeing you in future videos, but also when I get back to South Carolina. Jane, I guess I'll be seeing you next year when she's a student there. I hope this opens up some new opportunities, gives you some new experiences, and allows you to expand your skills and work on some new types of projects. And stay tuned for a future video where we get under the hood a little bit and look at how to do this without the Arduino IDE and all the library support. So until next time, we'll see you later. Thanks. Thanks.